you know, turning to a more general case when it's not so easy to uh, find the, the potential associated with uh, the given boundary conditions. In this case we do not have the same symmetry as before, so it's not um, easy to use any kind of polar coordinates or something like that in order to uh, guess the solution. Uh, you see here that we have no symmetry between the two circles. Um, on the inner circle we have some given boundary condition and the outer circle is also uh, a circle where we have a given boundary condition. But um, we don't know the potential, the solution of the, uh, the Dirichlet problem, uh, so to speak, um, uh, for the Laplace equation. But imagine if we could find some um, some conformal mapping which mapped this region D where we want to find the solution onto some symmetric uh, uh, domain D star and let's assume, assume that we can map these circles onto the new circles here and uh, we could have the same boundary conditions on the mapped circle as we have as the ori on the original uh, circles. Uh, then we could solve the problem in this uh, situation, uh, in this uh, domain D star, which we call the W plane. In this uh, in this set we use the variables u and u uh, and v. In this region we use the classical x and y. Then um, it's possible to find also the solution in this region. Let me show you how this can be done. Um, for this case, for example, we know the exact solution. Uh, we have already found it earlier by using the logarithm function. So let's assume that we have the solution in, in this situation. Uh, then we are able to find the, um, the harmonic conjugate C star uh, at least in uh, cases where the domain is um, is simply connected. In this uh, example it's not, uh, but uh, in very many cases we are also able to find the harmonic conjugate. Okay, what w are we going to do with this solution? Because we are not interested in, in, in finding the solution in this symmetric uh, situation. We want to find the solution in this non-symmetric uh, uh, set plane. So what are we going to do then? We have the solution here, we'll call it uh, uh, phi star, and we have this conformal mapping uh, which we call f of set. And f of set we put equal to w, and w has the real part u and the imaginary part V. Uh, if we have a complex uh, potential here, then we are able to find the corresponding uh, complex potential in this set plane by doing as follows. Instead of using this variable W, we just replace this uh, W by what the, the value w is equal to in terms of set, which is also a function of x and y. So we, instead of writing w here, we just write f of set. Then we get a function of, of the set here, and we know that this function must be um, analytic. And uh, why is that so? It's analytic be because Taking the derivative of it, we can use the chain rule to um, 
to obtain that the derivative of this function is just the derivative of f star uh, with respect to f of z multiplied with the kernel um, of uh, here which is just f of z the derivative of f of z so this shows that this function is an analytic function um, moreover um, the boundary conditions uh, here must be uh, the same as the boundary conditions here it's also easy to see and we by knowing that this function has a real part um, phi star we can just uh, it, we can just compute this real part which we can f call phi and we can can compute its uh, imaginary part which we call psi and well this is not so interesting for us to compute because this is the solution we are looking for and in order to find this phi we just replace uh, this um, uh, this u which is the the horizontal value uh, or uh, variable in uh, in uh, this d star region and uh, the imaginary part of this uh, uh, domain uh, is v and we replace it just by u of x y and v of x y so what is u and v well u and v is just these two functions which are the real part and the imaginary part of the um, uh, of the conformal mapping which maps this region d onto the region d star so this is the way of finding the com complex potential in uh, the originally original uh, domain which we are interesting to find the solution in so the solution will then be equal to uh, phi well, in this case, we assumed that uh, uh, there is an imaginary part, uh, this phi, uh, psi star, uh, that this imaginary part exists. It's not the case for any domain. Uh, so we need some theorem concerning the cases where we cannot find this imaginary uh, part or the harmonic conjugate of the uh, uh, function um, phi star so what are we going to do then well in these cases we uh, have the following result let phi star be a, an harmonic function defined on d star which does not need to be uh, simply connected or anything uh, it's only a, a domain uh, and let f of z be equal to this u uh, plus i y i v uh, which is assumed to be a conformal mapping from this region d onto this uh, region d star then it's possible to prove and this is the result we are going to use that uh, the function um, phi of x y defined by the function uh, phi star um, and in the first variable we just use this function u of x y and in the second variable we just use the function v of x by and this function is then harmonic so knowing this we have found the solution in the original uh, uh, problem and we are going to see examples where you can ap apply this theory soon